Hello, Kalimera. This is Runa the Fox from the Guild Hamburg Alliance, and you're listening to the Escape Pod Cast. This episode was recorded in front of a live Twitch audience. Take it away, boys. One is a Grand Arena Specialist from the UK. The other is a Territory Battle Tactician from the US. Together, there are no signs of intelligent life on board. With both having played this game since launch, the one thing we are sure of is that you will be entertained. The Escape Pod Cast, a service of the Escape Pod Castaways. A weekly podcast about the mobile game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Live from the network studios of Yavin 4, here are your hosts, Neil Andrew Eyre and Paul Anthony. Coming up on this week's edition of the Escape Pod Cast. The armorer hit the hollow tables this week. And, ah, crap. She's a playable character. What does that have to do with anything? You don't remember, do you? No, something wrong. Yes, I was wrong. And now I have to literally eat my words. Uh, uh, exactly how are you going to do that? You will see, Neil. Okay, well, the forums were abuzz with feedback about the challenge pit raid. Is there hope on the horizon? And our incoming transmission will be with a new content creator on the scene who has helped people with that said challenge pit raid. His name is Darth Kermit, and he has some other stuff, Neil. I think you're going to like this guy. And, of course, Patreon's choice on the bridge. And we issue a February challenge that uh, may get you interested in both our Patreon and maybe getting some hype trains started. All this and breaking news as and if it happens. Right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast news. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Escape Pod cast. I'm your host, The Nev, and as always, I'm joined by my hetero life partner, Paul Anthony. Paul, how are you today? I'm doing well. Uh, Just wanted to, one of the fun things that I do want to mention, we got our, we kind of got our year in review for the channel Mm -hmm. um, in our, in our emails today. So let's see. Uh, no, nope, that's my that's something I'll be talking about later. Where is it at? Oh come on! Oh, I've lost. I've lost it. I've lost it. We had all the stats for uh, for the past year. Oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. So we had. So guess how many total hours people watched the channel neil a couple thousand couple thousand how about almost ten thousand hours nice nine thousand eight hundred and five total hours in the past year and that that was remember we didn't start on here until february march are you talking about twitch twitch stats yes right not youtube stats twitch stats yeah, or Twitch mm-hmm. stats. How many how many unique people tuned into our um how how many p- unique people do you think have watched this channel on Twitch? Yes. Um I don't know. I mean, we've got like 800 subs, so I imagine it's going to be like maybe two or three times that cuz people will watch that aren't following. How about 7,400 Unique people have laid eyes on our channel. Nice, nice. <laughs> and then um, at the time in, in this month, they, they say we have 756 unique followers. 750. Yeah. But we've got over 800 followers. I know. I don't know what, I don't know what the difference between followers and unique followers is. Maybe... I- I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the maybe it's the drop off from the no more do no longer doing the Lego show. Maybe it's the drop off from there. Because obviously awesome. there, would, there would just be people that would watch the channel for that show because they like Lego Legacy Heroes Unboxed and not Twigger. So maybe it's 
something. But I also that. do Fallout. You do Lemmings. Drunken I've done Lemmings twice, and I was drunk. I would both not, times. Both times, I would not do Lemmings sober because it would be boring. The only reason I do Lemmings is because I'm drunk and it's funny and people can laugh at me. You know, it's 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 the game. It's a self, very self-deprecating game. So yeah, I well, wouldn't play Lemmings sober. God, that bored the crap out of me. <laughs> so I we do have to give a uh, shout out, and this is also a shout out. Thank you for uh, resubscribing to the Escape Podcast uh, channel, um, Cascade. You have been subscribed for eight months, but nonetheless, Cascade is the person who's redeemed the most points on our channel with one hundred and forty-two thousand on the Twitch channel. Hmm. So yeah, I, I'm still collecting all of mine. I'm I'm up to two hundred thousand at the moment. So, <laughs> and uh, the most used emote is, of course, the Escape Podcast emote. But Helly of Helly and the Noob is the second most used emote. It's kind of fun. Really, really fun. So, all right, let's uh, let's get into uh, Nooch coming in. Thank you very much, Nooch. Nooch coming with a. F- yep. Coming in with the uh, coming in with the follow forty two. We, you know what, Neil? We may get you know one month and ten days from right now. One month and ten days from right now. I would like to see us at a thousand. That would be the best fortieth birthday gift ever. Yeah, and if we don't make it for your fortieth, we need to make it for my my for my birthday on March thirteenth. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we need a thousand before, before we we just want a thousand before one of our birthdays. So yeah, before one of our birthdays would be nice. Yeah. All okay. right. Let's let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, before we get into actual um, in-game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes content. Let's talk about the big blockbuster announcement that Lucas Games is back. Mm. Well, I mean, it's Lucas Games is new. Lucas Arts was where the original games from, but they're not they're not bringing back Lucas Arts, they're just creating a Lucas Games division. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's nice that means that Lucas Arts will pretty much license um the uh, uh, will pretty much uh, pimp out the Star Wars IP to any game developer that wants to make a Star Wars game, as long as Lucas gets its cheddar, you know. So we could literally be knee deep, you know, knee deep in uh, uh, in, in new Star Wars games in 2023. Because there is no doubt in the back of my mind every game developer out there is going to be thinking to themselves right okay so the contract with ea runs out in 2023 it's 2021 now we've got two years to develop a game that we know we will definitely be able to release under lucasfilm under lucasfilm games in 2023 so that's why i think 2023 is going to be such an awesome year because we know that ubisoft are working on one we know that Ubisoft are working on an open world, so we know that that is definitely going to kick in in 2023. Um, I, I would like to think that a couple of the independent people, um, a couple of the uh, independent game developers that got that were developing Star Wars games for EA that got shut down are reinvigorated with this news and think to themselves, you know what, sod it, let's you know let's dust the mothballs off the game that we were doing finish it ready to release in 2023 i do genuinely oh god it's going to be such an awesome year 2023 is going to be so good for star wars games so i mean they don't have exclusive exclusivity to to be honest with you because we got traveler's tales which makes the um which makes the lego game uh, for for computers and consoles, there's I forget exactly who it is that's making the Lego Star Wars kind of the Clash of Clans clone. So, who do is it? I guess maybe it's because both of let let me think about that though. 
Both of those are Lego Star Wars. They were licensed to Lego, to Lego. not technically Star Wars. So maybe that's what it Correct. is. Correct. Yeah. I mean, there's just going to be a glut. You know, I mean, it's it's really, it's good. It's exciting news. I mean, we we really, really have been spoiled with awesome Star Wars news the uh, uh, the past calendar month. Um, and uh, this, this game news is just, it really, really is. It's the icing on the cake. Um, and, and giving everybody the warning, it's like, um, you know, uh, Disney coming out and saying, hey, Lucasfilm Games is, is you know, going to be taking on all comers. Uh, and everybody's like, oh, brilliant. 2023. Yes, let's go. Because how many, I mean, there were at least three games being developed by game developers under the umbrella of EA in the past three, four years. And those games all got mothballed because EA just didn't want to put the, didn't want to spend the time or the resources on it. And because EA owned it and owned the game, owned the, uh, the exclusivity, they get to decide which of their um, game developers, companies that are under their umbrella get to make games and don't get to make games. So the fact that anybody can now make a game knowing full well that they'll be able to release it, it it's just great. It's really, yeah. really good news. Mary J, Mary J says um, LucasArts is the original, but also Ubisoft has taken on the project of the new open world Star Wars game. So, yeah, I mean, it's like EA games, but they have different little studios that do things like, for instance, Capital Games creates the game galaxy of heroes that we talk about but it's ea claiming the name in this case it would be lucas games that's claiming the name but they could have ubisoft work on the game mm -hmm. well they could have anybody yeah Speaking anybody of, uh, that's the, the beauty part is anybody's going to be out of work on a game which so, is going to be awesome is Galaxy of Heroes a Electronic Arts property, or does Capital Games own the property, the, the intellectual property, and EA is supporting Capital Games? Because what happens in 2023? Could we see Capital Games move to Lucas Games? They could go solo. I, that's what I think. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know the contractual ins and outs of the deal that was struck between CG and EA, because obviously it's CG EA. But before it was CG EA, it was just Capital Games. Capital Games. So, um, I mean, we've if, seen Bungie. If, we've seen Bungie break off when they used to be a Microsoft only property. They've broken off since then, and they've created Destiny. Carrie worked on Destiny. You know, and now she's working on the unannounced, uh, unannounced project that it's gonna, if it's got her name on it, and I'm not, I'm not fanboying out, but with her track record, if it's got her name on it, it's going to be fun. We've seen that with Tapped Out. We saw that with with many other games that they play that she was working on. Yeah, well, the, with, with regarding the CGE 8, it, it really, really will depend on what uh, CG's contractual obligations are to EA and when that contract runs out. For example, you know, CG may be contracted uh, that they may be doing five year cyclical renewals on contracts, in which case they will have just gone through a renewal with EA now. But EA might think to themselves they're under no obligation to be the umbrella to CG and they might be like, look, pff, hey, take it, it's yours, run with it yourself. You don't need EA anymore. Run it yourself. But, you know, they then have to do everything themselves. They would have to fund it themselves. They would have to literally do everything themselves. No EA umbrella. But the game is in a good position at the moment. It could get, I mean, it could go either way. Yeah, of course, everything could get better or it could get worse. But knowing what's on the horizon, um, I, I think the incentive is there for CG to um, make the game more, maybe more sustainable, maybe more affordable, so that when it comes time to cut ties, 
between EA and themselves, they can, for all intents and purposes, take the game on themselves and have maybe, you know, maybe they don't... It's, it's, it's a tier of... It's, it's removing a tier of the hierarchy. You know, so instead of it being CG, EA, EA to Lucasfilm, Lucasfilm to Disney, it's cutting out the EA. Um, and and Lucas, um, Lucasfilm Games would be, you know, the new Lucasfilm, for, because obviously it's a separate division. It would so be the works. new EA, honest, in, in this case. Yeah. It, it would be CG Lucas. But they would have a lot more, I, I think that they could potentially have a lot more freedom to do um, what they want with the game, um, especially from a monetization point of view. If... They're Very the one true. if they're the ones stumping up all of the production costs and they're the ones making all of the money. I mean the percentage, the percentages, I can I can imagine the percentages uh, that they would have to give just directly to Lucasfilm Games is a lot less than EA. Cuz you know EA is it's like a, it's like a, a designer label, isn't it? It's like Gucci <laughs> or Armani. You, you know, the, the clothes themselves can be made relatively cheaply, but you slap that label on and you can mark it up by some ridiculous cost. So if EA isn't there, maybe the, um, you know, maybe they don't have to stump up such a higher percentage to them. And if they can reduce costs to Lucasfilm Games, then, you know, they might be able to, you know, pass that saving on to the consumer. Well, remember that we saw kind of a pushback when Epic said that they're going to take on the currency of their in-game, uh, the in, their in-game currency, and they said we're going to sell the in-game currency, not these other places. Not so that, yeah, no, see... not that, yeah, that, that, that kicked up a big stink with Apple and with Google. Yeah. From so, an in-app purchase point of view, yeah, definitely. If, if we so started to see CG, if, if CG were to break away from EA, we're not saying this is going to happen. We're not saying, we're not proverbially saying and damning EA in this No, no, situation. no, it's just speculation as to what's going right. to happen once, contra once contracts run out and stuff like that. Correct. I, I just want to make that clear that we're not calling for CG to break away from EA. We're simply speculating and being hypothetical. If they do, they reduce the price of crystals. Yes, to they could. Essentially, the level that we see the crystals in or the uh, the V bucks in Fortnite, that would pump start an economy in that game almost right away. Yeah, because the whales would be happy because they'd be able to buy more for what they were already spending and it would bring more people to the game yeah. that want to spend. So it's the whales and the krakens are happy because they're going to spend the exact same amount but get more crystals, which means they get more gear and the lower end of the market, the dolphins and the minnows that have been priced out of the game come back and spend because it's like hey, that, that 20 bucks I was spending a month gets me twice as many crystals, so maybe I'll spend 30 or 40 bucks a month. You know, uh, you know, the, the whales and the krakens that are spending hundreds, if not thousands a month, they're still going to spend the same amount. Right. They just get more for their, you know, they just get a bigger bang for their buck. If that was something that, you know, if that was something that, that CG were able to do moving forward. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment, it's all speculation, but um, it, it'd be interesting to um, it'd be interesting to see uh, uh, how things pan out as it gets closer and closer to the time where contractual obligations between CG and EA, you know, run out. It would be really nice if it happened right right now because I'm down to under 500 crystals. I, I need to I need to you know get get ready for more. <laughs> yeah, you see, I, I, I earn mine, you know, I, I have to earn mine, so it's a completely different thing for me. But I do earn, I do earn, I earn like 400 crystals a day. Well, I also, I also spend mine, you know, I, I'll buy two or three more, uh, two or three of the uh, packs of a new character just to get, just to get a small head start. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 
yeah, I don't do that. I, I spend I, all my I crystals it, on gear. All my crystals on gear. If I hit that 330, if I hit the 330, I'm done. But I can't get the 330 if I don't try. It's just like, and I'm, okay, before I do this and everybody goes, oh my God. Guys, th these are all old, old tickets anyway. You know, when, when you're the, uh, when you're the proprietor or not proprietor, when you're the person who's supposed to go out and, and buy these, I'm, I'm in a lotto pool. Okay, Neil. And in that lotto pool, every month, a certain person is in charge of buying the tickets. But since they go, have to go and buy the tickets, they don't have to chip into the pool. It's an 11 person pool. 10 people chip in one person buys. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can't win unless you play the lottery. <laughs> is that Mega Millions, is it? Well, it, it's uh uh but I it's actually both. <laughs> I I I you know what that that's one of the things that does my head in about your lottery over here. See, in in the UK and in Europe, you pay tax on your ticket. So the win when you win, what you win is a tax-free prize. Over here, it's like, oh, the Mega Millions, it's up to 750 million. And I'm like, yeah, but you're only going to see 350 to 400 million of that. So why even bother saying, oh, you've won 750 million? No, you haven't. Because Uncle Sam is going to take $350 million of that instantly. <laughs> so it's like, so why tell me I've won 750 million? But it's million also then? the annuitized jackpot. And so that's if you get it over 26 years. And uh, um, Hellenic says a one in 300 in million, uh, 305 million chance. Mega Millions is one in 302.5, and Powerball is one in 229.2. <laughs> Never tell me the odds. Mm. But <laughs> Dicky Dark Side side says, "How would I ever survive on 350 million dollars?" Think of think of Dicky Darkside's child, Neil. Come on. It's not the point. The point is why te why why say you've won seven hundred and fifty million dollars when you don't get to see seven hundred and fifty million dollars. I'm telling you now, if I was given the seven hundred and fifty million, I could be I could through philanthropy. Do a lot more good with 350 that Uncle Sam takes off you than they would do with it. I could do a damn lot more better with it than they could. And I'm, would you that, still be free to play if you won the lottery? Huh? Would you still be free to play in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes if you won the lottery? Oh, my main account would, yeah. But I would start a brand new account and go like Leviathan on it. But before I go Leviathan on it, I would get in touch with CD, CG and say, I'm about to drop 100k, 100k on a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes brand new account. But in order for me to do that, I want exclusive access to everything in your studio. If I want to speak to Crumb, I get to speak to Crumb. If I want to speak to the head producer, I get to speak to the head producer. I want a private Discord server with all of the devs in it and just me, or I ain't doing it. But I would. Just to gain just access. Just so to you get... think they could be bought for... I, I just want to point this out. that You think that you, they could be bought for 100000 to No, get... no, no. Not buy them. Buy access. I think I could I buy... That, that's, that's what I'm... You know yeah. what I'm saying. I think, I think 100k would be enough to buy me limited access to, um, to CG. You know, uh, and I think that you're dreaming. I think that you're smoking crack on the side of the road in your Winnebago. <laughs> I'm no, come on. A private Discord server, uh, conversations with Crumb, conversations with Eric, conversations with Doja Fett for a hundred k a year. Yeah, I think I think that they would stump that. Okay, up. you're saying uh, for for a hundred k a year? Yeah, I'd spend a hundred k a year on the game. The interest alone would just, you know, the interest on the money that you win would just, you know, swallow that up whole. Think about the, the, the when you think about the reality of it, you could live off the, in, you know, the interest would comfortably be in the seven digits anyway. 
If I, I wouldn't win, go. I'll... I wouldn't go nuts. I wouldn't go nuts spending Neil. it. I would be like the the, the ultimate philanthropist, literally. Oh, I, 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 I as well. I, I mean, honestly, I would be the amount of philanthropy that I would be doing. All I want is just a just a a, a studio away from loud noises. I would, I would, I would, I would have, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would have some fun with it. It would be like, right. How many things can I get named in how many different States in a year? So I'd set myself a goal, right? I'm going to get, uh, you know, I'm going to get the X amount of buildings or stadiums (laughs) named after me. It's like, oh, so the building's busted. Is it? Here's a hundred K name a wing after me. Oh, you need your, you need some stadium. You need a new stadium for your high school. Yep, not a problem. Name a stand after me. <laughs> That'd be it. I just, yeah. No, 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 a, a no conditions. St- stadiums. The the stadiums only condition are... would be to name something after me, and I want to see how many things. You know, I would want to outdo presidents. I would. That's what I'd be trying to do. Outdo presidents. It's like libraries. Yeah. Oh, libraries. That's another good thing. I would. I would fund libraries and and stuff like that. Definitely. And like I said, I would drop 100k on a brand new account. But the, the, the main account would remain free to play. But I would, I, I would have no scruples starting a brand new account and just going bonkers on it. Because it would be a fun stream. Because people would be like, do cup next, do cup next. Yep, okay. Seven star, gear 13, relic 7. Okay, give me the next cat. <laughs> Zaz, <laughs> Zaz calls it Neverage Stadium. Yes, it, yeah. Do the Ugnaught, do, yeah, okay, let's do the Ugnaught. Let's uh, be like, how how much does it cost? Let's see how much it costs to take a character from nothing to gear 13, relic 7. I'll, it, it would be a very, very well-watched stream. <laughs> I sometimes worry about you. Because it would be, I would, an, I, I, would, I, would, I, would I would hire a studio, I would, I would have a studio of people. Literally, I'd have cameramen. And I'd have a grip guy. I'd have the, the, the boom guy hold it. Yeah, just the whole thing. Yeah, the, the right. whole shebang. It would, right. I would just... So here we go, Neil. Okay. Let's, okay. let's go to break. All right. Because okay. after the break, we're going to talk about the armorer who came to the game as a playable character. Mm-hmm. And what did I do two weeks ago? What did I say? You, you if, made a bet. I made a bet that if... My my words were the armor will not be a playable character. Those were those were my exact words. Mm-hmm. Here is a piece of paper with those words on it. I will literally eat my words coming up after this break right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Hello friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy, and I approve this message and am compensated for signups for this service. The world's largest audiobook library is at your fingertips, and the Escape Pod Castaways wants you to try it for free. Head on over to escapepodcastaways.com and click the Going Nerdy offer button to claim a free audiobook and two Audible Originals cancel anytime and it's absolutely free to sign up check out audible and support the escape pod castaways all for free see audible website for details restrictions may apply did you know that if you signed up to become a patreon you could get tons of rewards force go scotty could do a roster review for you neil andrew air could share grand arena tactics or paul could even help you get maximum stars in geonosis territory battle ah and you even get access into the after show sound good sign up to be a patreon today for as little as two dollars a month you could unlock a ton of potential content and also get closer to the hosts head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up the following guild classified is brought to you by doombringer do you think Wat tambor is the only true galactic legend do you like to play seriously without the constant stresses of meeting lofty expectations does your current home not give you the return on your investment that you seek? Then look no further and join Doombringer of the Techno Union. Doombringer is a friendly and independent perennially overachieving guild with 280 plus million GP and it's looking for a few active and engaged members. We boast an impressive 130 and 12 TW record with no micromanagement or sandbagging 
while maintaining a relaxed approach across all guild events. Doombringer features lots of experienced players who love to help others work through teams, mods, and strategies to find success in all game modes. If you love to play Swaga, want to have success and fun, and have a good attitude and a focused roster, then we're a good match. We request 600 tickets per day and a roster with potential. Find our contact info on swgoh.gg and we'll chat about your potential future as part of the greatest guild in the galaxy. Would you like to hear your guild featured right here on the Escape Podcast Guild Classifieds? Reach out to us on our Discord server and post in the on-air classified room under the Yavin 4 Network Hello, Studios. Hello, I am Andy Beads, Commander of the 506 Procrastination Battalion. And I'm Camp Director Flair of Gaming Embers. We are the Officers of the Chain Gang. For a collection of Twitch streamers that like to stream our Grand Arena Championship battles. In Star Wars Galaxy Heroes. We feature accounts of all sizes. From the large accounts, like Fruit Ninja Mike. To the small accounts, like, well, mine. We have Grand Arena action for all viewers. With names like The Llama. Ran B. Dr. Zeppers. Mr. Jigabachi. Geek Girl 1980. Rico. Kate Gaming. Flair. Andy Beads. And the Escape Podcasts own the Nev. We bring you continuous game action every day during the attack phase. Check us out and ride the raid chain from streamer to streamer with us. The Chain Gang is a proud feature of the Escape Pod Castaways. See you on the chain, ya hosers. The Escape Pod Cast. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gents. Let's talk about the armor, shall we, Paul? Yeah, let's go ahead. Developer Insight posted January 12th uh, at uh, 7.04 p.m. The armor. High hero table hollows. It's hammer time. The armor makes her way to the forge to the hollow table, from her forge to the hollow tables. Her expertise in uh, forging Beskar, in addition to her wealth of traditional Mandalorian knowledge, ensured the armor would become a quick and steadfast ally of order um, of certain outer rim bounty hunters. So I, I'm going through this, and I'm like, okay, cool. You know, the, here comes the armor. With her tools in hand, the armor is ready to distribute the new Beskar armor buff. Wait a minute, buff? No, that no, no, no. What? Increasing her allies' survivability by granting defense, health, protection, recovery, critical hit immunity, and 100% counter chance. Wait a minute. That doesn't sound like an NPC at all. In addition to the armor abilities, she also introduces the brand new Mandalorian faction tag. No, Neil. No. What's happening here? This tag will also be added to the following characters. That We'll get into that in a moment. Make her part of your tribe by unlocking her. No, she's a character <laughs> in the new marquee event way of the Mandalore. Yeah. We were wrong. I was wrong. wrong. We, was we wrong. were wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, the, obviously, you we, know, are, we, we did we, get it wrong. I will get you wrong. You yeah, are wrong. We, we were, you know, when we first read it, we initially thought new character, but then we thought on it and thought, well, ooh, hang on a minute. She's a mechanic. You know, she's an armorer. She does that, you know, maybe she's going to be like a an NPC, like the Jawa Scavenger. So, like everybody else, we read it and instantly thought, oh, new character. But then, you know, after mulling it over, we were like, no, no, no. She is going to be just like the Jawa Scavenger because it's what the game needs. So, obviously, we were going to be wrong because it's what the game needs. Yeah. And the game isn't going to get what the game needs, which is... A NPC character like the Jawa Scavenger to exchange and swap and, you know, All right. pour into so, the melting pot and get something good out, you know? Exactly. Even if it was RNG that you got back out, you know, with a high chance to get this, but you could still get crap. Nonetheless, Neil, I said that if I was wrong, I will eat my words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why I never make such promises. These these are the words I said, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. K for for our for our listening audience, he's holding up read a piece out, of paper. I with have the written words a on, on a yeah. I, I've written on a piece of paper 
The armor will not be a playable character by Paul Anthony. Correct. I am making good on eating my words for the Twitch audience. Um, why don't you, uh, you know, read the basics part of the of the post? Uh, Do you have I it don't have up? it open. If you told me that's what I was going to be doing, I oh, would okay. have preemptively. Ha- no, no, no. It's only going to take me a second. Oh, I, I know it'll only take you a second. Okay, um, so you start eating that. So what's the post that we're talking about? The um, you want me to talk about the uh, the developer insight on the armor? Okay, so the basics. Armorer is a support character that provides her squad powerful buffs, a reliable way to apply armor shred, and calls frequent assists. She is the first character with the Mandalorian tag, and this update will also add this tag to several existing characters. Mirroring the armorer's role on the show, she repairs and rebuilds the armor of her allies to even stronger in game this means she restores protection thematically the armor for characters in most cases and applies some very strong buffs for the duration of the encounter when the armorer reforges her allies armor the beskar armor buff sticks around even if she is defeated because the buff is locked i have seen this the armorer keeps the squad fighting by restoring 40 percent protection to an ally the first time they drop below 60 percent health Unique attributes. Uh, the armory uses Beskar ingots to apply different levels of Beskar armor buffs to allies. The Beskar armor buff can apply one to three permanent effects depending on how many stacks of Beskar ingots are used. The armorer has the first Mandalorian leader ability that works specifically with other Mandalorians. Her special two, uh, this is the way calls all Mandalorian allies and allies with Beskar armor to assist. This allows her to call allies to assist, even if they aren't Mandalorians. Inspiration. The armor played a significant role in the Mandalorian's character arc, which is something that we pay homage to with the Beskar armor that she hands out. We modded her attack animations from her stand against the Imperial Remnant Stormtroopers. Besides the armor as basic, all the ability names and the event title come from her words of wisdom. We loved the scene where she was hammering out Mando's armor on the forge and wanted to implement something involving reinforcing or rebuilding an ally's armor. I I found that very, very fun. And by the way, that piece of paper tasted terrible. (laughs) I'm not surprised. It's paper. So, um, all right. So... Ways that you can uh, acquire uh, Beskar ingots. The armor attacks an enemy that has armor shred. So anybody with armor shred. No, yeah. Armor, the armor hits them with a basic or, or no, any attack. Yeah, any attack. She gets, she gets the, uh, she gets it. The first time any ally falls below 60% health. So. You have four allies. The first time any of them, I th- I think it's per character, if I'm correct. So, if you have one char- one person that falls below sixty, then you get one. Then another one sixty, but it can't be the same person. An ally, um, and the armor begins the fight with two stacks of Beskar ingots. Mm-hmm. An ally will gain all buffs listed in the description when you use the three stacks of Beskar. If the armorer has one stack and tries to target an ally with two stacks of Beskar, they do not add together. You won't be able to target them. You cannot you cannot layer Beskar. It's either one, no, two, or three. It's locked in at one, two, or three, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and then also, as we mentioned. Who else will get the Mandalorian tag? The Mandalorian tag was given to Din Djarin. Din Djarin, Beskar armor. Bam. Bam. Django, Sabine, Gar Saxon, ISC, and I liked that they put Candorous. I liked that they did truly put Candorous on there. We noticed that Bulba did not have the tag. Mm Mm-hmm. They were asked about it. Why didn't Boba get the tag? Because he states in season two of The Mandalorian, I was not born on Mandalore. 
So I'm not a Mandalorian. So there must be something in Mandalorian law that allows, you know, the armor to be passed down from father to son, even if they're not Mandalorian. I don't get it. I'm not going to get into a gigantic uh Yeah, no, uh, I, I'm, not gonna get, I'm not going to get into a, a, a semantic argument over Mandalorian law. I'm not. I'm just not in the mood for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... So, kit reveal. So her basic is a tempered strike. She deals damage to the target enemy twice. So she does it does two hits which that's not bad you know it'll t it'll lower uh b b t uh b1 stacks by two if the target ha target has armor shred she gains one stack of beskar ingot so i it is uh, it is what i thought it is only the basic attack that gives her an ingot not any attack so her uh, first special is to to uh, basically give someone the armor. If you have one stack, it's 50% uh, defense and 15% health increase. Two stacks, at the end of their turn, they recover 30% uh, protection. That's pretty cool. And then finally, three stacks, a 100% counter chance, and they cannot be critically hit. These are permanent buffs, cannot be taken away. No, once they're there, they are locked. It's, I mean, the the buff. It, the, I mean, the buffs are good. It's just, you know, how quickly, how quickly, uh, you know, that the, you're going to be limited in the squads that you can attack to be able to, you know, get it. I mean, uh, I think something like uh, it, it'd be good against. I mean, I think it'd be good against timeout teams. You know, those typical teams that get put together. You know. You know, thick characters with taunting and, you know, protection reject. You know, I think, you know, that it, it could be good against those teams because those teams are designed to be slow and not overly aggressive. They're, they're, that's why they're timeout teams. So I think that something like um, this, I think something like this character with a decent squad um, uh, surrounding her could be a good solution to those pesky timeout teams that you end up having to use you know b plus or a minus teams for you know to get over the timeout hurdle you you still need to uh the, the pesky timeout teams are still if they're done right they're still going to be timeout teams unless you bring in and put original mando as the leader and he gets off his contract, there's no way to, to just disintegrate them. Yeah, and, and, and I get that. Um, but a timeout team, you would have the time to build up three ingots and lock three stacks on all characters. That's what I'm saying. Because if you've got three... Well, there's no punches. There's no punches. It, uh, other the third than the... stack is a 100% counter. So every time they get hit, they're going to hit back. Yes, but most timeout teams are sitting there because they're teams that if you attack this person more than once, nest, you know, Padme, uh, you, using Padme lead with uh, GK, if you attack this person more than once, so it's not anything offensive, it's all a defensive thing with counter. Yeah, but if you throw some offensive characters in there... It'll chew through. I think it will chew through. And and having three stacks and getting that 100% counter would be um, most advantageous. Yeah. Uh, her, uh, her leader. Um, or no, I'm sorry. This is the way. Cool down to three. Second, uh, second ability. Inflict armor shred on target enemy. I, okay, so, Neil, maybe the additional armor shreds over time would make them susceptible. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is very true. Call all Mandalorian allies to assist and all allies with Beskar armor. Does not say that they have to be Mandalorian to receive Beskar armor. Anybody can get Beskar armor. Exactly, and that's why I'm saying that, you know, it. it, it once you've got everybody on three stacks, 
you've got the constant calls to assist, you've got their regular attacks, and then you've got a 100% counter from every single one of them. It's almost like an Ewok death by a thousand cuts team, but stronger because you're hitting people that are going to have armor shreds on them. Yeah. Uh, leader, at the start of battle, Mandalorians gain 200% protection up. It can't be dispelled or prevented. And critical hit immunity for two turns right off the bat. Oh, nice. It's like a, she, she, she's like a Mandalorian version of Bastilla. <laughs> and the first time another ally falls with below 60 with her unique, uh, they gain a stack of Beskar ingot and the ally recovers 40% protection. And then uh, the final text on it, the armor starts with two stacks of Beskar ingot is an Omega ability. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's reserve judgment until the, um, you know, the usual theory crafters have uh, had the time to, well, go to town on it, really. You know, let's, you know, let's, let's wait out until the likes of Clash and Ian and uh, 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 Kleso and Endor have, uh, you know, had the necessary uh, time to uh, really, really work through their rosters and, and see what works best with it and see how effective it really is. Yeah. So, or you could just what, or you could just watch, or you could just watch Arnold wail on it and throw it on, <laughs> throw it into a squad of Gear Thirteen Relic Seven characters and see how it works there. Because uh, that is very true. There, there is, there is always, there is always the uh, brute force option that uh, Arnold presents when uh, when he goes ham on uh, a new character. Yeah. All right. So we've covered the armor. But we also wanted to uh, mention that there was a lot of pushback this past, I mean, really, honestly, ever since it came out, about the fact that the challenge pit raid, it's hard as balls. It really is. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's hard for guilds that do not have the prerequisite number of people with slackers and rays. It's harder than that, Neil. It's harder than that because you have to have those people ready at a specific time to do damage at a specific time and be sitting on their phones at a specific time and to hold until a specific time well that's not that that that's not um uh, that's not relative to difficulty that's relative to inconvenience so i i, I would agree that it it's easy for guilds with the correct uh, number of slackers and rays albeit inconvenient for those guilds it's okay so it the inconvenience of it is, I guess, what yeah, does... Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, the inconvenience that it's creating is in order for it to be completed. That's what does seem to be causing the problem. Yeah. So, I'm going to pull this up here. We got, you know, we, we have our little show prep room. I and... shut down Discord so I can't see it. No, it's okay. We have our, we have our, uh, we have our show prep room that we do see what people post um, when, when CG posts, when CG comments on their forums. There's a bot, thank you to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes events Discord server, that you and I can, can go in there and go, oh, okay, what did Doja say this week? Quote, unquote, at 2 p.m. today. Dropping this comment to let y'all know the community sentiment regarding coordination efforts for Rancor CT have been relayed to the devs. No idea what the result, if any, will be, but it's being discussed. Now, I still, I still think, I still do 100% think that they will reduce it from Relic 5 to Relic 3, then more people in the guild will be able to do the event more damage will get done by more people in the guild 
and it will be less reliant. Court. It will be less reliant on timing. No, it, no, it still can... is because if if you've got if you've got little Timmy that's playing, you know, that's playing an account that just wants to go in and hit the rancor and leave and doesn't know what the hell to do with airplane mode and things like that. It then they're chipping away at the fact that it's once the rancor gets to 20% and that's hard coded. If you go in at 81% of the health of rancor left to go, once you get it down to 80%, it gets angrier. And then the next 20%, it gets angrier. By the end, when it has under 20%, the Rancor itself, unless you go in with a Han team, or you go in with a Jan uh, uh, Newt led, or, or, or any Separatist lead Django team, to where Django gets the damage immunity for two turns, you're up crap crick without a paddle. Yes, and um, um, more of those teams will be available to a guild if they reduce the relic down to the relic entry down to three. The timing and the convenience becomes less. You still require a guild with organizational skills that tell people in the guild, right, OK, you, do, you, you know, you're not going to go in to the pit until p2 you're not using your characters until p3 you're not using your characters until p4 it's no different when i was in ewok uh, when i was in ewoks of endor uh you know when i was in ewoks of endor i knew to use squad a for p1 and then that was it i would then wait till p2 kicked in and i was yep now you use that squad then p3 kicked in use that squad it got to p4 uh you know when but we were Neil, it isn't when you get to certain phases with this whole thing, it's put your phone on airplane mode and then go into Discord and take it off airplane mode and then sit there and who knows, your game could close in the background and screw and screw up screw it all up for any guild. Or, you know, if you work in a in a job where you can't turn off your phone because you're on call. You can't go into airplane mode while you're playing a game. We're talking about a game here, Neil. Games are supposed to be fun. And I'm fine with the difficulty. Of yeah, no, I, I, I don't, think, I don't think that they should change the difficulty. It's supposed to be a challenge. I just think the entry to it is too high. And if you reduce, I think that a lot of the problems um, occurring at the moment would not all of them i'm saying a lot of the issues could disappear if they reduced the relic level entry from relic five to relic three it would massively increase the you, number of people chasing, that can take teams you're chasing in. the wrong waterfall you're chasing the wrong waterfall it doesn't matter how many teams if i have 50 people who have teams for every single one the problem is that I'm having to turn off my phone or my ability to, I mean, to to use my phone. Why do you have to do that if there are more people doing damage? If there's more people doing damage, you still have to do it at a certain time. Because if you don't, if you don't, everybody posts 100% of the damage at the time. If you have people going in willy-nilly... You know, you know, once again, that little Timmy is going to go in there and hit it before everybody can load up. You have to still have all your guild to go in at, you know, at one time and say. And you play right, tag. Then, then you literally play tag. If you've got 50 people in your guild, you play tag. You know what I'm talking about, right? So no, one no, person go explain so because I don't who, think you understand. Whoever whoever needs to, whoever the this is whoever needs to go first goes first. You all go at the same time, Neil. Because well, if then, you then if X time, amount of people go, if X amount of people need to go at the same time, those X amount of people go at the same time. Once they've gone, they tag the next group. Okay, no, here's the Neil. You don't understand how this is going. 
Have you done it yet? I'm not going to get, we can't get past P1. Okay. That's because you need everybody to post 100% at the same time. You have a guild leader. We have Daenerys sitting there with a spreadsheet going, okay, what did you do on this run? Okay, your slacker got 6%. No, you have to restart, go back and do it again. If little Timmy posts during that during that time that the person has to restart and go again because they need to have 10% with their slacker, you have people that are literally waiting to post for others to hit their maximum I th- uh, I thought, ability. I mean, I mean, what was it in in the Discord ser- in in the GACN Discord server the other day? Uh, what was it? Vendetta was in there talking about how they did it with like what was it eleven slackers and a half a dozen rays? Yeah, and that's fine, but they still had to coordinate the times to hit it. They just have the people that are that are dead set on getting it done. It, it's it's maddening to to have it, you know, get to a certain point and not be able to progress because the rancor is all of a sudden on god mode because little Timmy posted eighty percent instead of a hundred. Well, As, you know, if they change it, they change it. If they don't. People will stop doing it, and only the most dedicated will do it, and they'll see that nobody's playing it properly, and they just, you know, people will leave it until, you know, 12 months from now. Or or they'll go out and get mercs. It's, it's just maddening. It truly is maddening. But I have good news for you, Neil. And for, for the listeners. Here's what we have coming up. Somebody who's been a veteran already at taking down the challenge pit or the crank core or the C pit or the pit CT or whatever they want to call it. Yeah. The, the rank or CT, we have somebody who's been posting wonderful videos about this. They go by the name of Darth Kermit and we're going to introduce you to them coming up after these messages right here. And also, Storytime with the Llama, right here on the Escape Pod cast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Hello, Escape Padawans. It is the Llama here to remind you that the Escape Pod castaways are on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, you can catch us on YouTube and on Twitch every week streaming Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Lego Legacy Heroes Unboxed, your favorite new Galaxy of Heroes show, GA Center, and so much more. Come catch us on the web. Are you a member of Team Paul or Team Neil? Maybe you prefer story time with the llama, or dabble in the buttery side of the force with Biscuit Weasel. Or maybe you like the escape pod talents from Down Under, like Heinze and Scotty. No matter who you support, you can get one of my designs from the Escape Podcast merch store. Just go to escapepodcastaways.com, click on the merch link, and it will take you to the Tee Public site where you can support me, Mrs. Anthony, also known as Critty K. Also be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast's Discord server weekly to vote for my latest shirts in the Design Derby on Woot. Links for both of these are down below. Thank you for supporting the Escape Pod cast. Heinze from the ANZGC is officially a member of the Escape Pod Castaways. Make sure you go and search for Heinze on YouTube today because he live streams a lot of his GAC content. And not only does he do that, he also does some pretty fun videos from time to time, including a behind the screen and also streaming Jedi Fallen Order. Ah, and from time to time, this idiot might drop by. Head on over and check out Heinze today on YouTube a part of the Escape Pod Castaways Network. The Escape Pod, cast for kids. It's really cool. Hello, Escape Padawans, and welcome back to Storytime with the Llama and the Escape Pod, cast for kids. Now, we are nearing the end of our Journey Through the Journey Guide series. Now, I know what you're going to say. Llama! There are so many more events in the Journey Guide that you did not cover. Let me explain why we're not going to cover those events. Storytime is meant to be a segment for new to mid-game players. 
things like Galactic Legends and General Anakin Skywalker just aren't beginning or mid-game content. They're definitely more end-game content, so I'm not going to be covering those events in story time. But there are a ton of guides out there on YouTube and in so many Discord servers about the event and about the characters that if you are an end-game player and you want a little bit more information, I highly encourage you do a quick search and find some of those guides from people like Heinze, Cubs Van Han, and all of the other great content creators in this community. That being said, there are still a couple of other things that I want to talk about that are in the journey guide. Now, there are a series of characters in the journey guide that don't have actual events. They're characters that you get from raids or from territory battles. So I want to take the time over the next few episodes to cover some of those characters and where you can get them. First up is being one of the ones that you should absolutely get first, which is Han Solo. Now you get Han Solo as a reward for the heroic Rancor raid. Similarly to how the rest of the rewards in the raid work, the more damage you do and the better you are in the rankings, the more Han Solo shards you will get. So if you want to get him as quickly as possible, I highly recommend if your guild isn't auto simming the raid is to get in there early and get in as much damage as you possibly can. Now, if you already have Commander Luke Skywalker, he can solo the raid. Now, a lot of guilds will have a kind of time restriction where you can't post damage longer than a certain amount of time. So you might want to go in and, you know, kind of set your speeds to fit that timing. But generally, he can finish it in about 15 to 20 minutes if you have it on full auto. All you have to do is just let him go and you can walk away. Now, let's take a look at Han Solo himself. He's a light side character, an attacker, a scoundrel, a rebel, and a smuggler. And he's definitely a character you want to have in your repertoire as quickly as possible. His basic ability, Quick Draw, deals physical damage to the target enemy, and if that target has less than 50% turn meter, it'll deal 75% more damage. Otherwise, it removes 35% turn meter, and it cannot be evaded. His first special ability, Deadeye, deals physical damage to the target enemy and stuns them for one turn. Han will also gain turn meter equal to his critical chance. His second special, Never Tell Me the Odds, gives all allies critical chance up and evasion up for two turns. Han will also gain 50% turn meter and critical damage up for two turns. His unique ability, Shoots First, gives him plus 35% counter chance and plus 20% critical chance. The first time each turn Han uses his basic attack, he attacks again, dealing 50% less damage. Han takes a bonus turn at the start of each encounter because Han always shoots first. During this turn, he ignores taunt and can only use his basic ability, but it will stun the target for one turn and it cannot be resisted. Han only has one Zeta and it's on his unique ability, shoots first. As far as modding goes, you're really going to want to mod him for critical damage, critical chance. He throws those percentages around to himself and his team, and he really thrives on critical chance, as does a character like CLS and Chewbacca. Speaking of CLS and Chewbacca, that is a great composition to use them, and they are fondly referred to as the CLS Trio. They work excellently together. Chewbacca and Han feed off of each other, and, you know, every time Chewie attacks, Han will assist, and and vice versa. So you really want to keep those two together. As far as a leader, you can put them in different comps, especially in 3v3 GAC. But if you're going to use them in a full rebel squad, I highly recommend using a CLS lead. It's really, really great. That's all for me. Tune in next week for more story time with the llama and the escape pod cast for kids. Receiving incoming transmission. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gents. Our guest this evening eats rancors for breakfast, apparently. Um, I don't know the full story, so I will hand over to the Master of Ceremonies to introduce to you all our guest this evening. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, 
I was uh, I was actually introduced. Uh, shoot, I really need to figure out who it was. Do you remember the name of the person that uh, introduced us? I do not remember actually. Oh, man, I, I I will find out while we're interviewing and uh, and and make sure that we give them credit. But nonetheless, um, I I was I was told to go check out this channel. At that time, I think you had two hundred subscribers. You have already blown up in the past two to three weeks to 483 subscribers. You are well on your way to being a major player already in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes YouTube content creation. Now, you only do YouTube for right... He only does YouTube for right now, um, but I, I think we might be able to convince him to do a little bit more. They've covered more than just Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. And they have a little bit of a retro flair to their videos as well. And I love, love it. And we'll ask him about that in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Darth Kermit. How are you, Darth Kermit? I'm doing great. How are you guys this evening? Doing all right. So, all right. I, I do Now, as I mentioned while we were getting ready, you, you definitely have the, uh, the retro kind of... Uh, I, I'm I'm not calling you a hipster when I say this. Uh, you you enjoy retro things. You enjoy the uh, the vaudevillain sort of era. And now I see exactly why that comes out in your videos, guys. You know, it, think of silent film um, screens. You know, you know, with the with the little fun uh, scrolling or or what it, scrawl scroll. I I I'm mm -hmm. having a hard time thinking of the word right now, but. He tells you how to mod your characters. He tells you exactly the strategy. He then shows you the strategy. You do damn good work. I'm um, thank you. I, I have to say thank you. You're even covering the pit. Well, you're welcome. And also thank you. It's always really nice to be appreciated. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten a lot of feedback about uh, how well I cover the different things. So it's uh, it's actually been really nice. So... I'm going to ask the questions, um, and then I'm going to go find the name of that person here. The, the question we ask everybody, tell me about your account. When did you start? What's your GP? And does Neil get to smile at the words free to play, or have you spent money? <laughs> uh, so I have two accounts. Uh, I have one account that I started the week that it launched on iOS. Uh, now, I've taken two very long breaks from the game um, with that account, uh, one for about a year and another for about uh, eight months. Um, so I'm only at about, actually, let me pull it up real quick and I can tell you for sure, I believe about 5.4 million GP on that one. And then my second account is one that I started specifically for GAC. Uh, GAC is, is actually my favorite part of the game. Um, yes, and... I like you. You get the thumbs up. <laughs> uh, GAC rules. Million. Okay, he, so uh, Neil, he's a five point five. Um, okay, c c can I? Are, are you willing to publicly give me your ally code? Yeah, sure. Okay, so so go ahead. Let, let's uh, let, let's get that ally code. Let me just pull this up here because so I want to uh, see. Are, are both your accounts free to play? No, so my primary account is not free to play, and my uh, GAC account is a hyperdrive account. Yeah, okay. so that's the only money I've spent on on that account. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you're going to start an account for GAC right around when GAC came out, and then the hyperdrive bundle came out, you pretty much had to do the hyperdrive bundle. Yeah, to I, I hate, I right? hate, I hated that. Um, uh, when the hi yeah, I, I was, I was doing my fourth. I was in the process of doing a fourth alt. Um, at the mm. time, geared purely towards GAC, um, and I was around about level seventy nine at the time. And then they dropped the hyperdrive bundle, and everybody else just went into orbit. And because I'm free to play, I kind of had to spend another. I think it was ten to twelve days crawling to eighty five. But but I do I did take a lot of pleasure, and I do mean I I took a lot of pleasure. When I hit 85, crushing people in GAC that were in my division, which was nine, uh, nine and then eight that had bought the Hyperdrive bundle. It's like, oh, hello there, Mr. Hyperdrive bundle account. Crush! 
Yeah, for anybody who wasn't, yeah, anybody who wasn't really good at what they were doing, the hyperdrive bundle could actually really mess them up because it would inflate inflate their GP. And if they weren't then farming the right characters after that, they would be in trouble. Yeah, especially if they weren't good at modding. Yeah, no, I, I you didn't I, get any. Yeah, I yeah. was, I was, I was literally, I was, I was taking in my relic geos. Um, I was taking in my relic geos in divisions nine and divisions eight because they were my relic characters before anything else. And I was just, you know, I would solo with the GBA, and then I would put Poggle and Soldier together, and then I would put Spy and Sunfact together, and that's three teams. That's just one geo squad. And I would take out three squads and I would just mm-hmm. outbanner my opponent every single time, every single time. Um, so, yeah, not not so much. You know, it, it kind of started tapering off a bit around Division seven mm-hmm. and then Division six. But uh, in Division eight, uh, Division nine and Division eight. Yeah. Every time I came across a hyperdrive bundle, I was rubbing my hands together mm-hmm. with glee. So, uh, but yeah, no, that's uh, you, w- like you said, you, you have the alt account and um, uh, a, a lot of people that really, really enjoy GAC do that. I know a lot. We cover a lot of people on our secondary show um, that have alts uh, that have been well, specifically created to do well in GAC. Let, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this account as if he was on uh, on the main show. What what is that ally code? Uh, you want the one for the alt account? That's the no, no, no for your for your main. All right, the main is nine six eight. Uh huh. One nine six. Got it. Two one four. Okay, so so we're looking at. Uh, um, oops, I did it a little too early there. So I'm looking at your account straight up. Neil, he's got a top 80 of 1.9. So he would be in the A division. A division or maybe even freshman, right? Um, With a GP and a top 80 like that, yeah. It'd either be, he'd either be in A or double A. Okay. He'd either be in yeah. A or double A. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we, we cover content creators that post all of their GACs. Now I see that you're starting to do that. Yeah. So Neil, we, we might, we might take Kermit as an alternate. We, we, we've already got one alternate in reserve. I know we, we may need two though. Remember it's possible. We can, we might need two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see in that, but, um, I mean, you would, uh, it, it's, that's a pretty darn good. What are, are you, are you normally getting Kyber with this? Oh yeah, yeah, I always get Kyber. So five point six with a one point nine million always getting Kyber, and also that's top. Good, that is that. That's some. I mean, there there are some. There's some good G eight. There is some good stats there. I mean, they'll they'll they. I mean, they could be better. But um, you're like me. I I you with your main account. You said you took off two periods. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, no, took I, I did. I did yeah. the exact same thing. Um, after about nine months of the game, I went on. I went on a sabbatical for I don't know. It could have been six months. Could have been nine months. Not sure. And then in two thousand and nineteen, um, I took two months. Uh, sorry, two. I took six months off, but not off. Off. All I was doing was logging in getting number one in fleet and hoarding crystals. And I did that for six months. So I wasn't doing GAC then either. So like you, if yeah. I'd been playing constantly, I mean, your uh, your lifetime banner score is 456. Mine is, I think, about 530. If we mm-hmm. both not missed that second period, you'd be well in excess of 500. And I'd be knocking on 600K's door. So because uh, six GACs will... Add a mm-hmm. lot of yeah, a lot of banners. You want to say thank yeah. you for the biddies? Yes, I do want to say thank you for the biddies and also a follow, which coincides with something else. Um, first off, thank you, Popeye, uh, D Pop. Thank you very much for the hundred bits. Uh, Cascade also for a hundred bits, and thank you, Hellenics, for the three shiny nickels. Um, if somebody in the next three minutes donates a hundred bits or somebody subscribes, it does start a hype train. But a follow from the person that I was looking for, AM2 Rain Man. AM2 Rain Man is the person 
who we owe the fact that we have you on the show today for. Yeah. So. Uh, he's uh, in uh, one of the guilds. He's actually in the guild that my alt is a part of. Excellent. Excellent. Well, he, uh, um, he, he did, uh, he, he messaged me and, and I, I don't have a problem reading it here. Hey, I have a guildmate who's trying to grow their YouTube channel. I know you guys do a guest every week, or at least it seems that way, which we do. We do. Um, and I want to help him. So AM2 Rain Man, thank you for, for introducing us. Um, and, uh, as I, as I mentioned in the beginning, you have quickly become one of my favorite content creators. Let's talk about your content creation method. What, um, and, and uh, <laughs> uh, Dr. Feelgood has started a hype train by gifting a uh, subscription to, uh, to Popeye. Uh, guys, go ahead and try to get that hype train here. I do want to ask a few more questions of our, of our guest um see how far we can get it i will make sure we recognize each and every single one of you at the end of it um what was the inspiration what got you into content creation what made you go hey i could do this watch this hold my beer uh a few things so one the arena shard for my main account has uh it's just ian and fatal of the playbook in it so <laughs> So I play with them all the time. Uh, so that helps. Uh, but then also I really liked, and, and really my main inspiration for the way that I do my videos was Skelterix. I, he was my go-to if I needed to know how to do something I wasn't really sure and I needed a, a good strategy for it. I love the way that he breaks things down, keeps it very simple. You get quickly to the strategy and he explains it very well, but he doesn't do voiceover really. So uh, it's that that can be tough to do. So I wanted to make videos like his, but with good uh, voiceover. So I mean, was that the inspiration? Because as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, you've got this uh, silent film block, mm -hmm. um, uh, kind of text styling there. Is but you have but you still do the voiceover. Is that uh, is that how you how you uh, envisioned it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really like that sort of style. I, I wanted some kind of overlay to to provide uh, text for people uh, for different things. Uh, you need to have something on screen for various different purposes. And that just seemed like a really fun way to do it, uh, to have the projector reel sound going and like the echoey um, theater room. And so that was uh, that was just a fun way to present text. Uh, I don't think there was any particular inspiration for that other than I'm a bit of a film buff. And so I, I love, you know, just the entire, uh, I mean, everything having to do with film. So, so getting into video production was actually a really fun project for me. You know, while being sort of locked down, I thought, hey, let's learn video production. <laughs> um, we're actually going to be starting up a, an actual play podcast soon. And that was actually my main project. So I wanted to practice for that by making some game videos. And I thought, okay, I play a couple of mobile games. Let's just practice and make some, some game videos. And then I used, yeah, Skelterix as sort of the inspiration for how I wanted to present information and, and make good sort of infotainment. Uh, you started uh, four months ago, according to uh, according to your your uh, YouTube page, with Eve Online. Yeah, the Eve mobile game, um, Echoes. Okay, I tried, oh. I tried, tried so hard to get into that game, um, but it was just too complex for me. It's like, no, I want, I want my space games to be simple. Just put me in a ship and let me shoot things. But it wouldn't it was a little bit more complicated than that <laughs> yeah there's some really cool things about it like if you want you know intrigue in your mobile game you'll get it there there's all kinds of i mean it, it carries over a lot of the eve online uh backstabbing and large like fleet battles and all this in intracorporation warfare um and different things going on and really large amounts of coordination so each each um, 
guild basically would have maybe 200 members instead of you know your 50 that you're trying to coordinate to do one raid you're now trying to coordinate with hundreds of people and then they had alliances where you could have 10,000 members so it's a lot more complex exactly uh, and i like things simple you know five man you know five men enter Mm -hmm. One man leaves, that kind of thing, you know, or, or something <laughs> in front of me and I can shoot it. I like that, you know, it's why I like squadrons. Uh, Even yeah, though I'm not very good at it, I still, you know, that's not complicated. You know, you get into a ship, you shoot mm -hmm. people. It's that simple, you know? Whereas, you know, you've got bartering and deals and alliances and it's just, just, yeah. I mean, I first two hours, it's like after first two hours, I'm, I knew that I knew nothing. And I'm like, my God, I've been playing this for two hours and I still just, so it's like, yeah, I, I can, st I mean, I don't play it anymore. I didn't play it for very long, but I can still appreciate that it's a good game. The cinematics in it were, oh, just mwah, lovely. <laughs> really, really, that's what got me, that's got me, got, what got me so intrigued with the game in the first place. Um, but uh, yeah, um uh, I, I, my pro props to anybody that goes with that game and sticks with it. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a economics masterclass, really. Yeah. Uh, although I will just on the subject of games and economics, I'm I'm noticing there's something. I, I'm noticing a game missing from behind you because I see a lot of board games. I see a lot of tabletop <laughs> games there. Where is your cones of Dunshire? I'm not seeing it. I haven't even heard of that game. Tell oh, me about it. Damn. Okay. So you see the the <laughs> the parks and recreation reference immediately falls down. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Cones see, of Dunshire is okay. is an imaginary game that was made real. <laughs> it was in the the in a TV show called Parks and Recreation. Parks and Rec. Yeah. So I I do you know since Neil brought it up I I do notice to your right. You have Star Wars Rebellion, which is a wonderful, wonderful two-player. Well, I mean, it could be up to four-player, but it's it's best in a two-player setting, in my opinion. Two-player Imperial versus Rebel game. Yeah, it's how one of my favorites. Uh, how many Fantasy Flight games do you play? Because we've been known to love our Fantasy Flight games. Uh, quite a few. Um... I'm not even sure how many I've got here, but I have a number of Fantasy Flight games just over on this shelf. We've got um, the Lord of the Rings uh, campaign game is right below it. Oh, and, oh my gosh. Okay, so that is. I, I couldn't yeah. see the title, and it looked familiar. And then Imperial Assault is down below that. Uh, and then I, I believe... How much of Imperial Assault? Because... Oh, it's stuck in the back. I literally have every single uh, every single pay, uh, book torn apart in a binder <laughs> that's about that thick. <laughs> yeah, we've only got uh, the base and one or two expansions. We, we didn't go all in yet. Tyrants of Lothal? No. You, you have to get that one. Good? one. Have to get that one? All right. You, you have to get that one because you get Thrawn with it. Oh, okay. That's, that's really good to know. <laughs> So, um, yes, uh, do want to, are, are you willing to publicly tell people what your Eve Echoes in-game name is? Because I've got two people that, uh, apparently play it. Yeah. Uh, Myra 74 Jeems. Um, that would almost have to be spelled out there. Yeah. I, uh, I'll, I'll send it to him. Send it to me in discord and I'll send it to him. Okay. So, so. Excellent. There you go, guys. We will make sure that uh, Zaz and Hellenix get the uh, um, get the quest, uh, get the in-game name. Uh, thank you, by the way. All right, here we go. I'm going to really quick do this. Um, so let me go back to where it started. Pops with the 100 bits. Cascade with the 100 bits. Hellenix with three nickels. D Popeye with the 100 bits. Uh, another 100 bits and another 100 bits. That was after Dr. Feelgood um gifted a sub to d popeye that started the hype train um d popeye with another 100 bits cascade with 100 200 300 um and then a 10 and a 50 
Dr. Feelgood with 500 bits to uh, make it to a level two. I've trained Popeye with another 100, Dr. Feelgood with 50, Cascade with 50, and then the hype train concluded. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> so you say you do only, um, you're only doing YouTube right now. Yeah, I actually started looking into Twitch today. So just making sure, uh, learning how to set all of that up, making sure everything's going to look right uh, and do all of that. So I'm looking into it. I'm hoping to have uh, Twitch going in the next week or so. Okay. And as soon as you do, we are going to make sure that the entire, uh, um, you know, a, a, a Twitch of us will have affiliate as soon as possible <laughs> yeah. because of the how. Twitch of us, yeah. Yeah, because of our because of our Twitter verse, because of the uh, Discord server, we will get you, we'll get you to your metrics as soon as possible. Because, um, so how much have you beaten the challenge pit every single time already? Oh, I mean, it depends on what guild. So for me, I I don't actually care that much about the challenge pit. The rewards aren't that good um well relic geez. eight is it, it's not it's relic eight is not supposed to be good it's spo just supposed to be necessary they never mm -hmm. said it was good <laughs> yeah so i've beaten it a few times uh but that's almost always with murking i prefer because i like to take some time away from the game i prefer pretty relaxed guilds uh, and so we don't take it quite as seriously as it needs to be taken uh, but I'll merc every now and then, especially to get video content and all of that. Um, it's really just not uh, the the rewards to me aren't actually worth the massive coordination effort and time investment that it takes. Uh, that's why I usually when I'll I'll do it, I'll merc it uh, because then you've got a really really focused core group who's just going to get it done in an hour to two hours, and that's it. Because uh, otherwise, with a especially with any even semi relaxed guild, you're talking about a two to six hour investment, and that's really kind of crazy for fairly mediocre rewards. Uh, the relicate's nice, but even that, it like you can take a you can very easily take your arena still with relic seven versus a bunch of other relicates. It's not going to make that much difference in Arena. Uh, it's really nice in the raid, though. If you've got a Relic 8 um, Supreme Leader Kylo, you're going to do significantly more with it in you know P1, P2. But that's right now the biggest advantage is just in uh, Arena. Or I'm sorry, in, in Challenge Pit. So uh, talking about more about the stuff, you have started to... Um, you've also started to make guides for the territory battles. Yeah, I mean, might as well make uh, guides for whatever's going on. Uh, and I usually do the uh, galactic challenges. Those are actually, well, they're kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they're really fun. Sometimes like the one that's going on right now is just really easy. Uh, but I like to do uh, serious under gear guides. That was always something that I've been very <laughs> big about since I started playing the game is trying to do every event with as low gear as possible. Uh, and part of that's because I love GAC. And so you want to have, you, you don't want to inflate your GP by having all of these other characters with high uh, gear levels and, and high GP. So if I can beat uh, like what last week's uh, Dathomir, I beat it on, I did the tier seven with that. Uh, with a bunch of G8s. So I had, uh, I did have to, I did have to take Zombie up to gear 10 though, because she makes it a whole lot easier if you take Zombie to gear 10. Uh, but you just need a bunch of health on uh, Daka and Asajj, and then you're kind of good to go. So, you know, that that's really fun too. I enjoy those. What, what is your, uh, you said, what, what is your favorite part of the game you mentioned? Grand Arena, for sure. Grand Arena. Um, and so are you going to be putting out, you know, I feel that this team is the best, or are you just going to be posting, are you just going to be posting the offense? Because I, I noticed that uh, you streamed um, just yet, uh, a day ago your offense for season 14, episode one, as you called it. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so I was planning on j- mostly just streaming offense. Um, I'll, I'll stream defense every now and then, just the, the setting of defense. Uh, that's mostly about analyzing the opponent and then figuring out what to do there. I did start putting together a series of um, uh, of videos about like what the strategy is and what the philosophy is behind creating the proper offense and defense. Um, I, I'm a bit of a you know, fan of say Musashi's uh, the book of five rings and Sun Tzu's the art of war and a few of those things. So you'll hear a lot of quotes uh, in, in those videos about that because there's there, all, most of the strategy is done beforehand. And then you go in and you just need to know your, your counters uh, during the offense. But a lot of the GACs are one on are one when you set defense, if you do it properly. So I have a couple of videos on that. Um, I've been putting together my offense uh, video on that, but it's been a while because uh, I haven't been happy with how that one turned out. So I'm still working on that one. Uh, and that'll be my third video on it. There we go. Neil, any questions before uh, before I wrap up? Because I promised him only I promised him that, you know, we wouldn't keep him too long. No, no, we'll uh, we will we, we'll let him go and we will keep an eye on your GAC. Yes, we're 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 definitely we'll, we'll get get we need to get you on Twitch. I think first first things first, we need to get you on Twitch. We need to get you up. Cool. Yeah, I'll get that going this week and uh, let you guys know. There we go. So, um, for those who are listening that don't have access to Hellenix uh, in the chat, spamming your uh, spamming your link, how do people find you? Uh, the easiest way is uh, YouTube on uh, YouTube slash C slash uh, Darth Kermit. Uh, or you can find uh, my Discord, which you'll see linked in all of my videos, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're launching a uh, podcast based on the new uh, Dune RPG uh, that's coming out from Odiphius this year. And stay tuned for that. So uh, do we have a name for that podcast yet? Or the is, Imperium. Or... Ah, are you going to do that in conjunction with uh, Doom getting released on HBO Max? Uh, we're certainly going to try to. I don't know if we want to wait uh, that long, but we'll see. Th- thank you very, very much, uh, Penguins fan, for the follow. But also, thank you, Darth Kermit, for coming on. It has been an absolute honor, absolute pleasure to have you on. Let's do this again uh, in the very near future. What do you say? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, guys. uh, If you haven't already seen this month's episode of Hellion the Noob, it is coming up in the break here. And then after the break, Patreon's choice questions uh, from our Patreons. Get those questions in. Also, if you're not a Patreon, you can redeem some of your channel points to ask a question. We'll see you guys on the other side of this break right here on the Escape Podcast. The Escape Pod cast with Paul Anthony and Neil Andrew Ware. Does your guild want to tap into their full potential in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah! For as low as $1 a month per guild member, your guild can unleash the power of the game in ways you never thought possible. Track your arena movements, guild progression, and much, much more. Contact Shitty Bill and get one of his shitty bots on your server today. Just look for him on our Discord server and tag or message him for more information. The link for our server is below in the description. Shitty bots, don't let the name fool you. Did you know that if you signed up to become a Patreon, you could get tons of rewards? Force Ghost Scotty could do a roster review for you. Neil Andrew Air could share Grand Arena tactics. Or Paul could even help you get maximum stars in Geonosis Territory Battle. Ah, and you even get access into the after show. Sound good? Sign up to be a Patreon today. For as little as $2 a month, you could unlock a ton of potential content. And also get closer to the hosts. Head to patreon.com backslash the escape pod to sign up. And now time for something completely shameless. Time to rest, hell yo boy. Mm. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> rest. Hellenics. Yes. <clears throat> rest. Hellenics. <sighs> What noob? Happy New 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 Year! 
me, 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 bag. Yeah, yeah, noob. Happy yet another revolution around our star day. Whatever. Go away. Come on, huh, huh, Linux? It's time to celebrate. New be beginnings. Come on, noob. But... You know I don't partake in waste of time, fabricated holidays that make no logical sense... But... ...and are little more than remnants of an archaic past. But... They're a waste of time and energy. But... And I don't like them. But... Everyone celebrates the... New, new, new Year. Hellenix, it's a widespread tradition throughout the galaxy. I don't care, droid. I'm tired. I want to rest. And I want you to go away. I know. I will start the, 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 the S2E8 protocol. The what now? Protocol. Enacted. What, 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 what's the problem this time, Hellenix? Oh, jeez. And why don't you want to celebrate the... New Year. Seriously? Hellenix, I, I, I know you're not motivated to create new content anymore, but as the saying goes, the show... Must go on. Oh, jeez. Noob? Yes, Hellenix? Go away. Seriously. But... No buts about it, mister. I just want to be left alone. I need some me time. Lennox, I'm just trying to... Cheer you up. And get you back into the holiday spirit. Well, I was never in the holiday spirit to begin with, droid. Um, Lennox? <sighs> you know, you're really starting to annoy me now, noob. Go away. Do whatever it is you want to do. Just leave me out of it. No. <sighs> You know, all I want to do is rest, noob. Don't read too much into it. I'm just tired. I'm exhausted, frankly. And I never celebrate New Year's anyway. Just go away and do whatever it is you want to do. Just leave me alone. Hellenics, we must do the skit. It requires a PSA, and we need a dramatic turn of events right at the end of this episode, because it's the penultimate episode of the season. <sighs> no arguing. Meatbag. Now... Where were we? Oh, yeah, New Year's is a time for new beginnings. New beginnings are essential. We must fulfill our obligations, etc., etc., and... You know what that, that, that means. Oh, dear God, droid. What do you think you're doing? You guessed it, Hellenix. I, N-0-0-B, have a short PSA that can help... You... Understand. This isn't how any of this is supposed to go down, noob. This, this, this PSA is brought to you by N-0-0-B and the Escape Pod cast... Merch store. Hashtag shameless self promotion. Visit our merch store to get some awesome stuff. Doing so helps continue producing this show, ensuring many more episodes to come in the foreseeable future. New beginnings. What are they? Why do they keep happening? And who stands to benefit? In, in, in this slot of BSA, we will explore new beginnings and the many myths that surround them. All things have a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> This is the natural progression of things. At least, that's what the organics keep telling me. Well, we droids do not experience life cycles the same way that... Meat bags. ...do. We too ponder the uncertainty of new beginnings from... Time to, to, to time. Are new, new beginnings a good thing or a bad thing? Today, we will try to navigate these... Muddy waters. ...and determine when to look forward to a fresh start and, more importantly... When it should be avoided. We've all seen it. The new year rolls around and folks all over the galaxy begin making resolutions. Some say they'll get in shape. Others say round is a shape. Still, others ask What are shapes? Snoob. Okay, maybe that didn't make too much sense. Perhaps I shall word it like so. New, 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 new beginnings can be beneficial for your mental health. They allow you to begin a new chapter in your life with a clean slate. Wiping away all the negativity of the past and refocusing on an optimistic and encouraging aspect for your future. Thus, new beginnings can be a great thing. Indeed. Making changes in your life should be done because you want the positive benefits that come from said changes to become a reality. What you don't, 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 don't want to do is make changes just for the sake of making changes. Your objective should be to enhance and improve your life, helping you to accomplish more goals than ever before. However, you should also be realistic, realizing that these changes may not come quickly nor easily. Making these changes can be accomplished if you A. Make a commitment.
commitment to yourself to follow through with the changes. B. Understand that there may be knock-on effects from these changes and C. Believe in yourself and your ability to make the necessary changes happen. Remember, this is your life. Take ownership of it and move steadily along the path that you wish to travel. After all, life is a journey full of twists and turns, exotic planets, gravitational anomalies, space turbulence, and malfunctioning hyperdrives. One can never be fully prepared for what lies ahead. But if you want to travel on a previously uncharted hyperspace lane, you can't allow fear and uncertainty to stop you from realizing your dreams. Only you can make the journey of your life the most exciting adventure imaginable. This has been N-Zero-Zero-B for the Escape Pod cast hashtag shameless self-promotion and new beginnings because that's what New Year's is all about. Wow, these, these, these PSAs really are harder to make than I give Hellenics credit for. So, do you see now, Hellenics? Wasn't that PSA helpful? Noob. Yes, Lennox? Go away. No. Instead, may I show you something that I've been working on for the last few weeks? Noob, if it makes you go away, then yes, fine, I guess, whatever. Show me what you got. Excellent. In honor of new beginnings, I proudly present to you a newly refurbished and fully functional TC. Fourteen. Ah! Master! TC fourteen. Why? I bet y'all didn't see that. The escape pod cast the bridge. And welcome back to the show. It's our fourth and final segment. We're on the bridge for Patreon's Choice. Yes, do we have a lot I, of questions today, Paul? Uh, uh, first off, before I do, during the break, Penguins fan 221, who is a longtime listener, first time caller, as we like to say in the radio biz, thank you for uh, stopping out. And uh, Geek Girl, thank you for the 105 bits. Appreciate you guys. So, all right. Um, so Geek Girl was in a comic book mood when she uh, uh, when she wrote these. She wants to know who's your favorite comic book character. Um. Oh, it's close. It's close. Um, I'd have to say Batman with Lobo coming in at a very close second. Both For DC. Me? Uh, it was the original run of Ultimate Spider-Man Peter Parker. I, I, I liked the Peter Parker from Ultimate Spider-Man before they rebooted it. Favorite comic book run? That answers your question. The Ultimate Spider-Man run was one of my favorite comic book runs. Now, I do, and that is just above a lot of Star Wars. That includes the um, includes Darth Vader. Which includes the, um, yeah, I really, really did like the age of insert resistance, republic, um, all those. I loved the age of runs, the one off stories of different characters. That was fun as well for me. What about you? Um, well, if it's, uh, so from, from, from a Marvel point of view, it would be, from a Marvel point of view, it would be the, um, uh, Overkill, which was a Marvel UK run that lasted for, um, I think it lasted for 62 or 63 issues. I had owned every single one. Um, from DC, it would be um, the Arkham Asylum, the Batman Arkham Asylum series. That was mm, just Arkham Asylum was good. Uh, Arkham, that was just oh god, yeah, just just <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, crossover would be uh, a crossover would have to be the um, the uh, the 2000 AD DC the the uh, Judgment on Gotham series. That's the uh, the that's the Batman well, that, Judge okay, Dredd so, crossover. So that and, kind of plays into this, Neil. Uh, favorite standalone event, for example, Civil War. 
Oh, favorite standalone event? Yeah. Killing Joke. Hands down. Without Bingo. a doubt. The Killing Joke is the greatest. I used to own a first edition print, hardback print of that, and I had to sell it. But, oh my God, without a doubt, the, 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 ba the greatest graphic novel ever, 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 ever done by DC, The Killing Joke. Incredible. Absolutely so incredible. And and when it comes to so so and the 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 last but not least the the uh, I'd have to say Dark Horse would be the um, uh, the Aliens series the Aliens graphic novel series that was um, that was one of my favorites. Okay, uh, so that kind of also leads in you you mentioned it in a way. What's a comic book issue that you think everyone should read? Killing Joke again. The killing yeah, the Killing Joke. If if you've never read a comic book before. Oh God, yeah, the Killing Joke, uh, or anything inked, ink, uh, anything inked by Bisley. Just yeah, Gr anything done by Grant and Bisley, you're going to be blown away by, by the the artwork, the inking. It th th those two are just incredible. So Absolutely my favorite incredible. independent, you you kind of went and, and mentioned independence. Yeah, my favorite independent comic book run for me was the Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Um, comic book that was great um they riffed the other comic books neil they yeah. literally riffed other comic books <laughs> yeah no, there was um there was a good one done by image uh which was profit uh that was quite a good one um uh, they did another good one that was quite good vigilante uh the, the, the we're talk i'm talking about comics from the 90s here you know so we, we, the, the, the 90s was my heydays you know the 90s was my heydays when it came well, to the 90s that's, was that's also when I got I got into great. comic books in the 90s and all I did from uh, all I did from from 19 uh, all I did from 1992 onwards was buy comic books I was in boarding school uh, I was in a dorm um, with a kid called um, Sky Andrew Bond who was heavily into comic books and he brought a bunch of them in a bunch of Batman ones in and I was that was it I was just hooked I was hooked <laughs> on them from that point onwards uh, D pop by uh, saying shut up and take my money with another hundred bits. <laughs> so um, least favorite comic book character, and I know I'm gonna get a hate some hate for this, but I feel because it's because he's a one trick pony, Juggernaut. Um, oh god. Uh, least favorite. Um comic book character i mean the, there's probably a few marvels um there's there's probably a lot of marvel characters that i don't like there's probably quite a few dc characters there's probably quite a few dc characters that i don't like um uh, uh as well I, I i i could never get into the darkness um i i thought it was just the character wasn't the character that what what you know it wasn't the the darkness themselves because it, it was all about the little devils and the little minions <laughs> and the comedy relief that you got from them. He, he himself was never actually. Yeah. So um, um, I suppose from um, I suppose from Marvel, um, so I've never been. Are you you want to know something? I've never been a big fan of the Fantastic Four. I can never see been a, never been a big fan of the Fantastic Four. The, I don't get I like them when they do crossovers um so i've 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 enjoyed the fantastic four in crossovers with other marvel characters but standalone fantastic four i i've never i've never liked i've never liked them just on their own all right um if you could uh, if you had to be a marvel villain who would you be and how would you defeat the fantastic four that was from Severanus. uh if i had to be a marvel villain I don't want to be a Marvel villain. Marvel villains suck. DC villains are the best. Marvel heroes are the best, but Marvel villains suck. That's that's just my personal opinion. But if I had to be any Marvel villain, I Magneto. don't know. I'd I'd be I'd be Magneto, definitely. Fine, I I would be. 
Uh, I'd be Saber Saber Tooth or Saber Wolf or whatever his name was. Oh, good, you can be my bitch then. Well, I I, I would I could also turn on you, but that's another thing. All right, yeah, uh, that would not work out well for you. <laughs> All right, if you could. Ch- uh, oh, and how would we defeat the Fantastic Four? Um, we would uh, we would trap them in a bubble. There we go. If you could change one thing within a comic book universe that would affect the outcome of an event, what would it be? Sorry, ask that question again. If you could change one thing within a comic book universe that would affect the outcome of an event, what would it be? I would say the, you know, having the other supermen show up before the death of Superman by Doomsday and preventing that whole arc from ever happening. (laughs) Um... Um, I don't know. I, I I wouldn't want to. Ch- I, I don't. There's no comic book that I've read um, where I wish the outcome had been something different. Uh, so there isn't a comic book that I've read where I would like to see an event in that story arc changed in order to. Um, to change the um, the outcome of the uh, the end. So, yeah, no, the, I mean, I haven't come up. I mean, th- th- there probably are comic books out there where, you know, if I read it and I got to the end, I'd be like, my God, for God's sakes, this sucks. Why don't you just change? If you just change this one thing, it would have made the comic book so much better. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, that, th- there isn't one. I have not read one yet. Okay. Um, by the, I'll uh, say, so, so Dr. Zeppers asked this question and I'm just going to read it for, you know, the fact that we will make sure that we cover it all. What do you think about Disney opening up at Star Wars rights and contracts to include additional game digital content creators other than EA? Rumors are that Ubisoft is making a game, new Star Wars MMO like game. Any thoughts? If you covered this in the podcast and I missed it, skip. I only wanted uh, to mention it because if you are just skipping ahead, and listening to this part, we do cover that in the first part. So go back and uh, listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we talk about it extensively in the first segment. Yeah. All right. And name a non-famous person who has positively influenced your life. The problem for me, the problem for me is that I usually surround myself with people that have tasted the limelight at one point. Or, um, you know, Neil, you you were you know, you ran for public office. Mm -hmm. So you could be quote unquote, a famous person. (laughs) Um, I have, I I usually surround myself with people that have not let their 15 minutes get to their head. With that being said, the person who's, who really changed my life other than my mother, my father and, and, and my wife and things like that, is a guy by the name of Doug Harris. Doug Harris is the the mastermind behind a lot of Texas radio, Hall of Fame radio, you know, situations. Um, He's been kind of the kingmaker, the, the person who pulls the strings behind the scenes to help others achieve their dreams. So he his the thing that he does he 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 does noisemaker communications. He tries to be a a marketer for other people and that's how he lives his life. And that's kind of the inspiration behind this. You know, we just had Darth Kermit on. I love to put other people before me and just hope that it gets appreciated going back. In time, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's all I ask is that, um, and I said this. I think I said this last week on the air. I want to be someone that someone can look back on and say, "Because of you, I didn't give up." I want to see people. You know, I want to see people better themselves and and do good in the community. 
So there's my answer. Doug Harris of Noisemaker Communications. Thank you. He he used to be a uh, he used to be my boss when I worked at uh, uh, News ninety two FM, which is now a defunct radio station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, um, I mean, there's a, there's there, I mean, there are probably there there are several authors out there for books on um, peaceful parenting that nobody will ever know or hear of. Um, so they're not particularly famous. Just just because you write a book and it gets published does not make you a famous person. If only you know a few thousand people buy or read your book so um there's definitely a few authors out there of um uh, of books on peaceful parenting that i would uh, definitely say aren't particularly that famous but most certainly inf- influenced me in a positive way because it made me want to be a uh, a better parent so but i can't think of any names off the top of my head because they're not famous <laughs> <laughs> but i'm sure you could look i'm sure you could find it and if you oh, saw yeah, it no i could like probably fi- if, I, if i went looking if i went digging i could probably find i could probably find them yeah i mean there is i mean there's a there's a couple of there's a couple uh the, there are some out there but uh, i mean there is one but they're a famous person so you know they don't count i'm just talking i'm just trying to think of non-famous people that had a positive influence so yeah definitely definitely authors of books on peaceful parenting that's for sure geek girl uh almost made me cry here she says you guys are the main reason why my channel grew as much as it has and y'all are the reason why i keep streaming mm-hmm. geek girl it, the go. feeling's mutual in a way the feeling's mutual that's why i don't neil neil is one of the reasons why i don't give up on gac <laughs> yeah because i would roast you if you did i know i know but I'd welcome that roasting. All right. This is kind of the reveal. We mentioned this in a moment, or we mentioned this in the open, um, that uh, we have a little bit of a February fundraiser coming up. So not now, but in February, we are going to try to cover, just, just in February, we would love to see if it happens, to cover the entire production budget which includes Zoom, which includes some of the production crew that um, that we that we have, um, as far as uh, voiceovers and things like that. Um, it includes uh, we're trying to get the website up and running, um, and all that stuff. We're trying to cover the production budget of this show in February, twenty eight days. If we could do it in four weeks, that'd be great. If you are a Patreon on March 1st at midnight, so essentially you'd have to sign up in February and then, you know, still be there through March. If you are a Patreon, you will get a pop socket if we hit our goal. You'll get a, a, I've got a a sample on the way. I have a Escape Podcast pop socket. If you are a Patreon at that point, you will get a pop socket. If you're not a Patreon, if we hit $2,000 in the month of February, donated in subs and bits through Twitch channel only, what we will do is we will give away the remainder. The Patreons definitely get them, but the remainder of them, which could be at this point 75, you could there could be 75 pop pop sockets going out the door to to you if you're able to be mailed one via the US Postal Service if you are a sub to the channel we're going to see if we can do the the 2021 budget for the escape podcast in February stay tuned for further details on that and how we'll measure the you know We'll we'll get the thermometer, you know that thermometer for, during uh, telethons. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do for that. Um, anything else that you wanted to cover this week, Neil? No, no, I think we've uh, I think we've done well. We're at the bottom of the hour. Shows All right, good uh, Helen- Helenix says I don't want to sound like a noob, but what's a pop socket? It's a phone grip for your phone that you can just hold it like that. I have the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes one for the Twitch audience. You guys could see that. 
there. Yeah, I gave mine to my youngest. <laughs> I had one of those. I've, I'm, you see, I'm posh. I've got one built into my case. Ah, there I, you mine's, go. Mine's literally built into the case, so because I'm posh. No, but I mean, it uh, can also it can also work as a stand. Indeed, so. it can. That, that's really cool. Yes, one I, of those I, I thingies. Like yes, and and all of the production crew will also get one, courtesy of me. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, PopSocket is the brand, and they're the original brand. They're the ones that make some of the very, very best, um, best phone grips, retractable phone grips. Anyway, Neil, since you have nothing, who who's streaming some Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes right now on Twitch? Uh, it's probably going to be a lot because it's GAC. It's a GAC I know, attack I know. night, I'm so there's going to be a boatload. So I'm pulling. You know what? You Gridden, know who Fort is? Moore. Um, no. Galaxy of Beeros, no. Mudbomb, Sea Dots, The Llama, Trevor, e Grace I've got Gamer. It, <laughs> I've got it. Let's do somebody that we're going to be featuring on Monday during the day. Um. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We, we normally would raid Llama because she's on right now. But ladies and gentlemen, on Monday on the Escape Podcast channel, Gridden versus db official the usa versus the uk fight night fight day as fight we day. call it instead of fight night it's fight um, night for db <laughs> we're going to be showing both streams and they will be talking to each other live on our channel mano a mano live gac fights it's going to be right here on monday high noon eastern you don't want to miss that no you don't so we're gonna go raid Gridden or Girl Dan, as he uh, as his uh, uh, name says. But we're gonna go raid him. If you're a, a uh, if you are a Patreon, we'll see you in the after show. Anything else, Neil? Nope, we're good to go, mate. Don't forget All to right, tip guys, your waiters and your waitresses. You. Be nice to each other, damn it. We'll see you next time, Neil. Push the button. You got it, mate. It's tough now, folks. What's going on? Where the hell are we? Paris? Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. Attention! This is Colonel Sanders in forward command. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! All personnel proceed to escape pods! Close down the circuit! Evacuate the zoo! Southern Scrum Vector! You have been activated! Abandon ship! Where is it? Where is it? It's gonna be here! Out of order! Even in the future, nothing works! This ship will self-destruct in exactly 10 seconds. Uh -huh. Oh, friends, this is Thaddeus from Going Nerdy. The Escape Podcast was filmed in front of a live studio audience full of tweaked out murder bears. Sit, Boo Boo, sit. Good dog. <laughs>